Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Clary. I'm a child and family therapist and a parenting coach and the founder of Connected Parenting. And welcome to the Connected Parenting Weekly Podcast. Join me every week and we'll tackle everything from temper tantrums to bedtime to sibling issues to teenage angst. Parenting can be so wonderful, but it can be so hard. Parents often say to me, hey, can you just come live at my house? This is the next best thing. Let's do this together. Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about anxiety. So it's so important to understand what anxiety is and what it isn't and that it's also very contagious and so many of us are struggling with anxiety. So many of us are really overwhelmed by worry and anxiety right now and feeling quite miserable. Our kids are struggling with it. We're struggling with it. So I want to give you some tools and um, a deeper understanding of what anxiety is. Um, and really offer you some ways to, to change your practice, to change the way you think so that you change the way you feel. So for so many of us, our feelings control us instead of us being able to control our feelings. It's such an important conversation to have. And so I want you to think about and, and listen to this podcast today, both for your kids, um, but also for yourselves. So really listen to the tools and the strategies and think about using those out loud in front of your children to really model for them because children learn, learn from example, right? They learn by watching us. So they can watch us manage our feelings of overwhelm and anxiety and stress. They're going to know that it's possible to do that. So let's start with what anxiety um, isn't. So anxiety is not the boogeyman. It's not this awful, scary thing that's bad for you. A reasonable amount of healthy anxiety is really important for good mental health. If you don't have some anxiety, you're not going to care about showing up at work on time. You're going to cross the street and go, ah, the cars will wait. You, you'll eat moldy food from your fridge. You have to have a certain amount of anxiety in order to be safe. And if this it's this crazy balance between having just enough anxiety so you're careful and you're motivated um, and you care about what's going on in your life, but not so much that it's paralyzing. And that's the trick, right? It's to find that zone right in the middle where anxiety works for you, not against you. We cannot exist without anxiety. It's an essential part of being human and it's an essential part of being healthy and functioning. So that's the first thing to really know about anxiety. And so when you talk about anxiety with your kids, don't give them the message that it's a bad thing. You know, oh, you're so anxious and why? Don't, don't give them that message that they're wrong to be feeling anxiety. Give them the message that anxiety exists in their body and this is what it feels like and this is how it can help you and this is how it can not help you. Um, and have really open conversations about feelings. So before I dive deep into anxiety, and I know I've done some other podcasts on it, so I encourage you to go back and listen to some of the other ones as well, just to round it all out for you. But we are obsessed in our culture with not feeling, avoiding feelings, running away from feelings, um, you know, doing everything we can to not feel. And that's a really big problem. And we actually raise our kids this way too. Our kids get upset, we shove an iPad in their face. They're upset about something, we try to fix it right away. Um, we try to placate them, we give them a snack, we do everything we can to move away from the actual feelings. And here's the thing, feelings are energy. Feelings are communication. That's how our body talks to us. They're information. And if you ignore that information, your body's going to keep sending you that information. So at first, it's going to knock on the door. Then it's going to pound on the door. Then it's going to double pound on the door and then it's going to kick down the door. It's going to do everything it can to communicate with you and let you know that it has a message to share. And the more we ignore it, the more that feeling intensifies and your body does whatever it can to get you to listen because it thinks you're putting yourself in danger. So just a quick review of the brain. So the midbrain's job is to pay attention to safety. It's, it's the security system in the brain. It's basically a survival program. Its job is to weed out um, any kind of uh, increase in our heartbeat, our breathing, tension in our bodies, and it's going to quickly assume that there's danger. It's going to override uh, the rational part of the brain. So the frontal lobe's job is to 
uh, mediate, to take perspective, to um, inhibit, to uh, really kind of regulate. And that's the executive functioning part of the brain. But the midbrain is really powerful. It has the ability to override the thinking brain. If it senses at all that there is an increase in danger, and it will do that by paying attention to the signs in your own body, it will override your frontal lobe and it will take over. And then you will suddenly have all kinds of physiological symptoms um, of anxiety uh, and feel like they're, they're completely overwhelming in your body. And that part of the brain actually takes over quite often. And that's why it can really feel like our feelings control us instead of us being able to control our feelings. And then we get used to thinking that way and feeling that way. And anxiety loves you. It loves you and it wants to keep you safe and it wants to do a really good job. And so every day that you survive, because it was so um, anxious and knocking on the door and giving you all kinds of symptoms and, uh, and stress, every day that you wake up, it goes, oh, I did a great job yesterday. My person is still alive because I'm really good at what I do. So I'm going to do the same thing today. In fact, I'm going to ratchet it up a notch just to make sure that my person is, is even safer. Now, these are, these are biological programs. These go back thousands and thousands of years when, you know, we were living in situations where, you know, animals could be attacking us and our villages could be pillaged. And, and you know, there are people in the world who still live in frightening situations. But for a, a lot of us, thankfully, if we're privileged enough, we live in a world where we're pretty safe. And that gives us, <laughs> that doesn't give our brain a lot to do. So it actually finds things to do, essentially. And it kind of takes the everyday things that we stress about and decides that they are life-threatening. And certainly on a grand scale, you know, your job and bills and, and your kids' mental health and what's happening at school with them and all those things are very important, but they are not life-threatening. And it's really important to begin a practice. If you watch my or listen to my other podcast, uh, the Mental Health Comedy podcast that I do with Ed Krasnick, uh, we interview uh, well-known comedians and we literally like, it's like a therapy session. <laughs> we just kind of go through amazing strategies that really work and help you rewire your brain so that it's wired um, for contentment and joy and happiness rather than uh, wired for fear. So if you have a chance to listen to that, there's more strategies there. But this podcast is really how to think about this yourselves and also how to talk about fear and anxiety with your kids. So it's important to know that, and I, I say this all the time, but we only have two emotions, love and fear. So anger and bitterness and anxiety and cheating and yelling at people and gossiping and all of that stuff, that's all fear. So it's really important to understand how does fear show up in our bodies? So it can certainly show up in that you know, repetitive thinking and what ifing and kind of looping and having these thoughts that just go round and round and round and you just start to feel better and then the thought comes back and then you get this feeling in your stomach and off you go again. But it can also feel like irritability, anger, um, you can even get to a point where you're so overwhelmed that you don't feel anything. So the, the human brain is very complex and emotions are very complex. And with our kids, it's important to understand that anxiety can either go inward into being clingy and afraid to do anything and scared to take any chances and being super nervous about everything, or it can go outward into being prickly and nasty and bossy and rude and that's my seat and you can't have it and trying to control all of the tiny things in order to regulate anxiety is a really common way that anxiety expresses itself so we also have to look at ourselves do I do that am I doing that am I trying to control everything is that anxiety so we don't always recognize how it feels Sometimes it's just physiological. It's a horrendous feeling in your body where you literally want to jump out of your body and run down the street. It's a very, very miserable, uncomfortable emotion when you are highly anxious and it's exhausting. So anyone who is anxious is tired so much of the time. It takes so much energy to be anxious, but it also can show up in stomach aches, uh, you know, stomach issues, headaches, 
uh, tightness uh, in your chest, difficulty breathing, um, dizziness, uh, you know, all in, shows up in all kinds of ways, loss of appetite, overeating. Um, and certainly in our world right now where we're dealing with the pandemic and everything else that's going on, a lot of people are like, do I have this virus or am I anxious or am I both? And it, it can get really, really overwhelming. So I want to leave you with some important tools today that you can practice and really be thinking about and modeling for your kids. So the first thing I want you to understand is that anxiety is energy. It's energy. It's information. It's data. That's all it is. It's your body taking information from your surroundings, translating in a way that you can actually understand it, and it's sending you a message. If you ignore the message, it's going to repeat the message. So as ironic as this sounds, you actually have to feel your feelings. You have to feel the anxiety. So you get that wave of anxiety. You, you kind of let it wash over you. And then you say, okay, this is energy. This is information. This is my body talking to me. And this is a very primitive part of my body that's just worried about danger that's talking to me. You let that sit for a second and then you read it just like a computer. You decode it, you read it, you feel it, and you literally say to yourself, okay, this is what, you know, being afraid that my, you know, child didn't do well at school or this bill didn't get paid or I missed this meeting. This is what it feels like when this happens. This is my body talking to me and telling me this information. Now you can also try this with physical pain. So the next time you stub your toe or bang your elbow or hit your head on something, the first thing we do when um, we, we're in physical pain, is, which is information, it is energy and information, is we usually try to avoid it. We go, oh, 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 eh. we do whatever we can to pull ourselves away from the pain. And what happens is the body goes, well, I don't think she's listening. I don't think he's listening. So I'm going to continue to send this information. <laughs> I'm going to increase the pain until I'm pretty sure that my person is listening. So what you can try the next time you're in pain is take a deep breath, relax your tongue on the bottom of your teeth. You can do this with anxiety too, but just relax your tongue on the bottom of your teeth, drop your shoulders, relax your stomach and go into the pain, not away from the pain, directly into the pain and literally say, okay, the information has been sent. I am registering this. I understand that that hurt when I whacked my head on the table or I banged my knee on the coffee table. I get it. I've understood the information. Thank you. Message received and watch what happens. The pain will start to decrease. It's an incredible pain management technique and emotional pain and physical pain are very, very similar. So the next time you're feeling anxious, register it. I understand what my body's trying to tell me. It's trying to tell me that this feeling uh, is frightening. I'm going to feel it. I'm going to decode it. I'm going to read it and I'm going to release it. So this sounds so incredibly simple, but if you're able to do this and practice doing this, because we're, we're very practiced at doing it the other way. We're very practiced at looping and what ifing, and if that happens, then that happens, and then that's going to happen, which means this is going to happen for sure. And then on and on you go, which just keeps your body in this state of fight or flight. So if you just register it, you can do that with your kids. You can do that when they get hurt. You can do that when they're sad about something. You can hold their hands. You can forehead to forehead or gaze in their eyes. Say, you know what? Let's just take a second because this feeling is telling us something. This is what it feels like when you don't get invited to something and it feels really hard and it feels really sad. And I'm going to sit here and I'm going to feel it with you. And we're going to let our body just talk to us. And then we're going to trust that we're going to get over this. And we're going to let it go. So teaching your children to feel their feelings is actually a really important part of good mental health. And you can do this out loud yourself. So when you get disappointed about something, you can just say, oh, I'm just going to take a minute because my body's talking to me because I'm so disappointed because I thought I was going to be able to do whatever that thing is. And now I'm not. And I'm just kind of registering how that feels. And I'm just going to sit with it with a, for a little bit. I'm going to recognize it in my body. And then I'm going to breathe through and then let it go. And I'm going to keep my frontal lobe on. So really being aware of who is the feeler of these feelings is really important. And showing your kids that it's okay to feel is so important. The other thing to remember is that, you know, I talk about this all the time, but if you're feeling anxious, 
you are living in the future. You're imagining and living the future. And the midbrain is very basic. It is very simple. It doesn't understand you imagining something, remembering something, or experiencing something. It's all the same to the midbrain. Only the frontal lobe has that temporal reference and knows that something is either going to happen, has happened, or will happen, or is happening. So the, the midbrain, really, it can't tell the difference. So every time you are what ifing, every time you are worrying, um, your body thinks it's happening right now. And if you're sad, and if you're depressed, you're living in the past. So it's in the moment and it's in the now where you actually have freedom. So I have other podcasts where I've talked about um, lots of strategies around how not to ruminate. Go back and listen to some of those. Uh, I have one on ruminating. I have a couple of on, on anxiety itself. Go back and listen to those. But today is really about feeling what you're feeling and teaching your children to feel what they're feeling. And even if it's a sad part in a book or if it's a, a movie that you're watching, um, don't just feel it. Just, just let yourself feel it and talk to your children about doing that. Let them learn that they are the feelers of their feelings and that it is all information. Here's another trick to try also. Um, and I like doing this to practice controlling your anxiety and you have your kids do this too every time you are watching a show and there's like a really intense part coming up and the music matches it and you can your own body because remember the mid the midbrain can't tell a movie that you're watching or a book that you're reading from an actual real life thing whenever you feel that wave of anxiety lean into it this is this is what this feels like to, to be worried about some characters that I'm watching in a movie. This is what it feels like to be afraid. I feel it. I'm going to lean into it. I'm going to process it. I'm going to let my frontal lobe uh, turn back on, telling me that it's just a movie. And I'm going to actually breathe and release it. And when you actually release it, almost, it sounds crazy, but it's almost like you're digesting it. You're letting it sit right in your body, right in your stomach, and you're kind of feeling it. You're letting it in, you're leaning into it, you're digesting it, you're almost like alchemizing it and changing it into something else, and then you release it. That's a great way to practice because that's not actual real life things. That would be a TV show that you're watching. Just just practice, get in the habit of doing that. Um, or when you're having a minor worry about something, lean in and try this technique. Um, it can be really helpful. And the more you practice it in little ways and have your kids practice it in little ways, um, the more you're rewiring your brain, you're building new, new neuropathways, you're building new choices and options for yourself when bigger things come along. And that's really the key is to be rewiring your brain. So again, this is something that you have to practice. You can't just do this once and it's done. This is the new way that you process your feelings. And these are conversations that you can have with your children about it. Um, this is, this is, I, I really have to stress that I think this is one of the foundations of mental health and it goes along with compassion and empathy and being in the moment with your child, which by the way, you have to also do with yourself. If you are not using the calm technique and if you're new to my teachings, um, go back and listen to the first few, um, episodes of this podcast where I teach you about compassion, empathy, the calm technique, using compassion and love as medicine. But you also have to do that for yourself. You have to be kind to yourself. It's so important to have that self-compassion and use the connected parenting model on yourself. And just to wrap up, um, just so you have, um, you know, a couple of other tools that you can really use. This, this is really important. After you've registered the feeling, after you've sort of downloaded it and decoded it and read it, and you're getting ready to release it, in that process, you wanna be asking yourself a few questions. First of all, is this life-threatening? Is there some imminent danger? Is there some saber-toothed tiger that's actually about to jump on me? And the answer, hopefully for most of us and most of the time is no. It's something that's out there. It's some looming worry we have about the pandemic or a virus or school or work or a difficult colleague or whatever it is. It's actually not right in front of us. It's actually not about to jump on us. 
So you ask the question, is this imminently life-threatening? And the answer is no. The second question is, is there anything I can do about this right now? So if it's a test you wrote, or if it's a conversation you have to have with someone in the future, or it's a job interview that you had and it's done now and there's nothing you can do about it, um, the answer is no, there isn't anything that you can do about it right now. And then you move on to the next phase, which is really important, which is taking the direction of your thoughts and thinking about something neutral, thinking about something you can taste, touch, feel, uh, something in your life, in, in your world right now that is working, that is lovely, that is beautiful, that is reliable. Take your brain and focus on that. Take the wheel and control the direction that your brain is going. So the real takeaway from today is feel your feelings. That's, I, I, I realize that it seems paradoxical. It seems like running away from them is actually going to be what works, but it's actually taking a moment, turning around and walking right towards them that actually shuts that off. And I want to reiterate that these are conversations. Don't do this all the time and drive your kids crazy, but you know, from, now, from time to time, really be modeling this out loud. You know, I have a really uh, important meeting later and I can feel it in my stomach. I can feel this information. My body is talking to me and thinking that it's something dangerous, but it's really just this meeting. So I'm going to lean into the feeling. I'm going to like really pay attention to what my body's telling me. I'm going to read it. I'm going to feel it. I'm going to digest it and I'm going to release it. And you can say that out loud in front of your kids. They're watching us all the time. We are teaching them all the time, whether we know it or not really beginning to teach them that they can feel their feelings and that they can control their feelings instead of their feelings controlling them is a really important life skill, not just for them, but for you. Hi, I'm Barrett Caleri from Connected Parenting. I hope you enjoyed our podcast. And don't forget to check us out on the web at connectedparenting.com and like us and follow us on Facebook.